Okay, how is everyone doing? Good. Um, let me do a quick poll. Um, who works direct, directly in developer experience or productivity space? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, thank you. And um, who does not have a team which focus on developer experience or productivity in your company? Okay, small part. Cool. Um, thank you. We'll get started. I'm going to cover a little bit more than measuring developer experience and productivity. So um, we'll see how it goes. Make sure there is enough time at the end for questions. So let's get started. Um, yeah, my name is Sridhar Ramakrishnan. I lead uh, developer experience and productivity at Slack. Um, been with Slack for close to five years now in this space, around eight years. That's my Slack profile. Um, and when I'm not working, one of the things I'm very passionate about is mentorship. So I've been mentor for Plato from 2019, done a lot of one-on-one -on -one sessions and circles. Um, so that's about it, about me. If you have anything more you want to learn, definitely please come by uh, later. So I'm going to jump directly into it. Uh, what's the importance of dev productivity? Um, so if you go and talk to any engineering leader or a business leader and then ask them, hey, tell me your top three spend for you. And specifically, if this is on engineering, um, the first one is going to be around infrastructure, where you're running all your um, app, your code. So this could be on cloud, on-prem, hybrid. Um, and then the second one is, um, yes, developers, developers, developers. Um, I mean, without developers, we can't build. Um, good application, solve some of the difficult challenges we have. Um, so how can these two be addressed by having a team which focused on like improving, reducing cost, um, and having efficiency for developers? So in short, this is how a team focused on dev prod helps. One, it reduces infrastructure costs. Um, for example, if you're running things on CI locally from one, um, <clears throat> like say you're running on Intel and you want to get into M1. So that's one way you can reduce costs. Like there's a lot of efficiency you can do it in cloud. Um, and when you talk about developers, it's like, you know, what we can do to reduce friction for them. Um, there's, there's a lot is expected from a developers from like getting something very, um, sometimes it's not even specced well. It's like they have to come and try to understand what is the requirement, what's the design, and then implement and get feedback and iterate on. So there is a lot is on uh, developer's stake. So having a team which look into what's the journey of a developer, what do they do from the time they open their laptop and then maybe close the laptop, like, so look into the entire journey of the developers and see what are the major friction points and how we can reduce those friction. Um, and by doing this, it helps the business uh, grow faster. So if creating an app or a piece of feature is um, taking like, say, three weeks to build and how we can shorten that cycle. So that is the efficiency bit to it. So that's on dev prod. Uh, let's talk into the main aspect of the talk today, like how do we do uh, developer productivity at Slack? So the first and the most important thing is um, measuring what's happening. Um, and this is a very interesting area. Like there's a lot of opinion about what needs to be measured, not measured. Uh, but I want to start with something we do it very seriously. It's surveys. So we do developer surveys. We do surveys um, quarterly, and we reach out to all the developers. So at Slack, we have thousands of developers working on different technology. There is clients. We have Slack clients. We have backend system, infrastructure systems. So 
like making sure we can talk to them, and this is both doing surveys and also doing like user interviews to them, like talking to them directly, what is their most pain point? And it could be slightly different from the platform they are working on. A challenge an iOS engineer is having may not be the same challenge like a front-end engineer would be having. Um, so how do we do it? We, it's a survey, we send it on a quarterly basis. We track like what is the employee engagement? Like um, the NPS over here is an employee NPS and we ask questions like how likely you will recommend your friend or anyone um, to Slack based on what kind of experience you are having as a developer. This would include anything from tools, infrastructure, whatever they use. Um, and we track by platform just to see. And here is a good example where certain things are better on one versus there. And the goal is to get it better quarter over quarter. As part of this survey, we ask a lot of questions. Um, it's like, you know, focus around testing, how easy it is to test. Focus around like tech debt. Do you have visibility on the debt? Um, how easy is to prototyping? Because it's a fast pace. You need to like build features um, often and prototyping is a key factor and doing that on different platform is a challenge. So to understand what is a pain point from the product engineering, what's a pain point from the infrastructure engineering. Um, and two things we take it in the dev prod my team looks into is like, you know, are we making the right investment in this area? So as part of the survey, we share what we are going to do in the next quarter and then get feedback from them. Like, is the focus is in the right area? Do you have any feedback around it? Um, other than the NPS, the other numbers you are seeing is out of five, um, higher the better. And the last one is also trust in action. This is like a developer at Slack has a trust in our team that we will be able to solve some of their problems. Um, and doing this, like if you're getting started, you don't have a survey, if you're getting started, um, the score would be less, or that's how it was when we first started. Um, and then as you start presenting, sharing back the feedback, what is the focus area, you start seeing that it slowly uh, improved over the course of time. Um, we also see the response rate. That's an interesting area. It's sometimes very challenging to get feedback from everyone. We are trying some creative ways to get feedback from engineers. Um, so it's not just only like quantitative metrics. We also get um, qualitative uh, feedback from them, uh, part of the survey, and also like having like a listening sessions with them. So this is some of like you know, this is the recent feedback um, which we just did it, and it tells like what the developers are thinking in terms of um, the DevXP team. So that's on the survey. So you know, it's tricky because a lot of things impact people, it impacts developers, right? So there is a perception, there is a reality. So sometimes you're not very sure um, there could be bias to it. So what we also do is we track metrics. We track all the metrics, which are whatever we can track at this point, and then continue to track more metrics. So what you're seeing over here, this is, again, it's a screenshot in Slack where um, this is for some of the metrics we are tracking on mobile, like iOS and Android, like what's the success rate for a CI build, um, what's the failure, um, time to mergeable is one of the metric you are seeing as part of this, like it's how long it takes for a developer once they create a pull request to get it merged, um, including, excluding, like, you know, review times. And we track, the team track this on a weekly basis. So we have automated alerts. This is an alert generated and posted automatically in our Slack in respective channels. So we'll have something similar on you know, front end, on desktop. Um, and these are all like, for example, some of the metrics we also do collect in terms of deploy metrics. 
So how many, like, how many deploys are happening? How big is each of those deploys? Um, how long it takes to deploy? What we can do to optimize the time over here? So it's important to start looking into different metrics. And when you're not sure whether something is working well or not, uh, the first thing is start measuring them. So this could be using traces, building dashboard, having um, some kind of uh, tooling and data warehouse. We have a lot of internal tools for that. And also we'll make sure that we close the loop by integrating back with Slack. So this is an interesting topic. If you talk to people, a lot of people would be wondering about, OK, productivity versus experience. Um, some people care a lot about productivity, and if you go and talk to a developer, they, talk, they care about like, what's their experiences. Like, am I happy doing what I'm doing right now? What's the pressure? So the way we think is like, it's, it's always like a race against time. Like, there are so many, you know, this is the developer journeys. Uh, the time it takes to plan, spec, build, test, review, merge, deploy. There's a lot. You can add code reviews and everything else. Um, what we do is we try to measure, um, other than the first two, we are just getting started, how we can start measuring the planning and spec time. The rest of the things we have metric right now, so we can find out how long it takes someone to build, how long it takes for a test locally, remotely, CI, um, and as part of the deploy process. Um, so we track all this, we have metrics for it, but when we talk and brand our team, it's all around experience. We don't focus on the productivity aspect of it. That's sort of the outcome. We focus on the experience aspect of it. So the branding internally is developer experience. We call it DevXP. And this helps to understand, like, you know, you can make things really good in terms of build, test, and review. But the overall experience may not be great because there is, they are having some challenges with prototyping, or they are having challenges with design, or um, something around you know, release or deployment aspect of it. So how do we go about this? OK, measuring sounds great. Um, you know, we are doing interviews. Developers like to complain because they have a lot on their plate, which is so valid. Um, we look into all these on a quarterly basis, and the approach we take is very similar to what we do on product. We experiment, we take big bets, we look into what are the metrics we have. If we have enough metrics, then we look into how we can improve them. If we don't, then we'll start measuring that. So it's a continuous cycle of like, you know, um, what are the metrics? What is a big bet we need to make? And how is the experiment going? Is it working well? If not, then we'll, you know, change that. Um, all of this happens, like, when you think about big bets, it's like, you know, fundamentally changing the build system could be one, um, focused around, like, you know, local development versus remote development. Um, and also the keeping things to the latest and greatest, like some of the keeping the lights on stuff, like KTLO, um, that's a big responsibility because you know security and compliance is also very important for us and for all of the companies. So how do we prioritize? Making sure there is always KTLO stuff allocated and also the big bets. The way we think about is like, what is important for Slack's customers? Um, hope most of you here are Slack customers. So reliability is a key. So what we can do to improve over there. Security, compliance requirement is very important. At, at the same time, it's, that's all customer facing. We look into like, what we can do for our customers, which, is, which are all developers, primarily developers. Um, so again, that's theory. I want to get through like, a case study. Uh, and this is like one of the big bet we took on iOS. So like three years back, um, if you ask an iOS developer at Slack, and they have a very simple PR, it could be even changing a readme file, it could be 
creating a feature. Um, on average, it took more than an hour for them to get that PR merged. Um, this is due to the architecture, is due to the time it takes to build, the infrastructure we run, all the CI. Um, we had issues with stability. There was problem with, you know, you know, build failures, lack of queue, so many things. And the SCAL is always hot. Like, um, all of the teams in DevXP in my arc, they have SCAL channels where people can escalate and say what is working, where they need help with. So the big bet we took three years back was to like, okay, let's relook and think about whether the build system which we have right now, does that work or do we need to explore a different one? So we looked into Bazel. Um, it's scary if you think about it, um, that to making a big bet like this on an iOS environment, like where Apple has set of tools, and then we are slightly deviating from that with uh, trying something like a new uh, build system. So we took the same approach, which is like, how can we prototype? Can we get quickly, get some feedback, experiment with few developers? We asked for feedback, and it was a constant loop where um, for quite some time, I think, uh, more than 18 months, we ended up supporting both the Xcode build and the Bazel um, to make sure there is feature parity as the technology was evolving. Uh, we also need to build um, a CLI, a command line interface for developers to use so that it's much easier. And at the same time, it works very well with you know, the IDE developers use on Apple. Uh, and we got a lot of help from the community around Bazel. Um, so anyone can guess what's the current average time to mergeable um, from like more than an hour, three years back, and what it is right now? Any quick guesses? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ooh. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. Okay. Um, we are just below seven minutes right now, um, and. This is, again, like we didn't get into seven minutes right away. Um, it took a while. We got from 60 to uh, 30. We felt, OK, that's a good number. You know, people can, instead of having going for a lunch for every pull request, now they can take a short break. Then we were like, oh, maybe we should shorten that and uh, give them more coffee breaks. So we thought, like, OK, anything under 10 minutes is a good number. Um, so that's one case study. Uh, we, we are also doing a lot of big bits right now, including remote dev environment, like how we can leverage remote um, dev environment instead of what's happening in a local laptop. Um, also exploring about AI, where we can invest, uh, and how that's going to help um, the developers. So these are the three learnings. Just to summarize, like you know, uh, think about cost of running the business. What is the play of a developer? What a team like this can help to reduce that, make things better, help with the experience aspect of it. And you know, measuring is very important so that you can go and see like where are the main points. There are so many things to be improved. So you need to bet what to look for, where to invest first. Um, and just constant experimentation and improvement. And one more, uh, you know, you can go and find one area you can improve for your developers. So if you are, if you don't know, talk to them. Um, sometimes just talking to the developers itself help them. Um, and a lot of times, by just listening, like they will be able to solve their problems. And if you're looking for inspiration, you can just check uh, slack.engineering. That's our blog. There's, we have quite a few around this area and also other um, investment we have done on different platform and clients. Um, and thanks for listening. Awesome job, Sridhar. Uh, there was just so many cool things in that talk. I especially love the, the screenshots of the uh, the notifications of the metrics mm -hmm. that you get on a recurring basis, I feel like that probably just encourages people to just kind of think about it more often and also realize that like, hey, if I can make some quick change here, like 
that number is going to go down on the next week, you know, when I come back from my weekend, like, and then, you know, you can also add that to, you know, all the, you know, impact that you've made and all that stuff. So it really just puts all the incentives in a good spot. Um, so yeah, awesome job. We have some really good questions coming in. So let's jump over to those. Uh, let's see here. So what is the sustained engagement rate for taking the surveys? And do you find it a challenge to engage developers to take the survey consistently? Um, great question. Survey fatigue is a real thing. Um, and we have learned the hard way by doing the surveys for years right now. So there are creative ways you can do. Um, like I said, like for us, if you are trying to solve problem without knowing what is the pain point of a developer, then mm -hmm. that's you know going against our principle. So we do it on a quarterly basis. Um, we plan for it in advance. We time it in such a way there is no other surveys going on, like you know, <laughs> company surveys and other surveys. Uh, it can get tricky. Um, and to engage developers, few things we have tried out. Like initially, we reached out to all the developers. Then they were like, "Oh, every quarter is a lot." And some of the projects, like we have done, it takes quarters or even years to improve. So we even went with like, "Okay, we'll do." Um, a subset of people so that they don't have to do surveys every quarter. Mm. Again, this depends on the size of the engineering org. Mm. Like with thousands of engineers, we'll be able to do a lot more. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, <laughs> I love the idea of like, you know, making sure that there's no other survey. It's kind of like uh, when movies come out and, you know, they need to <laughs> make sure, watch out which movies are also coming out that time, like Barbie and Oppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, next one uh, here we got, how do you determine what to ask in the surveys? Is there a guide or framework for it? Um, I think it's, you know, two things to keep in mind. One is, you know, quantitative metrics, so you can measure, like you saw, quarter over quarter. Um, not directly asking things like, you know, how would you rate your NPS? Nobody is going to get that question. <laughs> so you need to like, you know, um, most of them may not even know what NPS is. We may need to explain what NPS is. So the way we ask that is like, okay, if, if you're trying to get an outcome, if we know there is a theme of problems, then the questions were around like, um, how do you rate yourself in terms of prototyping one to five? How, what is the ease of doing prototyping? What is the ease of doing mm. testing? If you know those are like some of the feedback you have got, um, make sure some framework to think through in terms of survey is like keep the questions consistent. If you keep on changing the questions every quarter, then it's hard to correlate mm. and see. Um, we spend enough time to make sure, are we asking the right question? We have asked something last year, is it still valid this year? Do we need to rethink about it? Yeah. Um, so we make sure like the survey questions is mostly aligned uh, and we do it at least for one entire cycle, one year. Mm. Uh, but there were certain things happens with, you know, outside of our control, whether it's on the business or something else, then we add those questions. Um, Got it. Yeah that, yeah, that makes a lot of sense and it's, that's super valuable advice because it's something I'm starting to get into too. I'm on design systems, so we're you know making UI stuff for mm -hmm. everyone to use and starting those surveys. But also, I have a tendency to experiment a lot. But so if I mess around with the questions and change them up and stuff like that, then I'm not going to be able to actually get some solid data. So um, one other thing I didn't mention, oh, yeah. like we do all the surveys as anonymous so people can say whatever they want to say oh, okay. about the tools <laughs> and experience they are having. Um, and that way that increases engagement as well. Ah, oh, got it. Do you, d just follow up question on that, do you find that you have a hard time getting like deeper, you know, f knowledge around the feedback that you received given that? Because that was a decision I had to make where it's like, Okay, I'm going to make it not anonymous because if someone writes something confusing, I need to ask them about it. Yeah. And it's like, you know. So what we do in that case is like if something is like, oh, it's not very clear, we don't know what action we need to take, we come up with a, like a set of users, we'll go and do interviews. Mm. So we have a standard questions we go and ask them is like, 
hey, how is thing, this going? Like, what's your most difficult challenge as a developer in this team, mm -hmm. in this platform? Mm -hmm. So you can actually get a lot more. Uh, the surveys give like a first level of areas to look into, and then if you want to dig in deeper, uh, we also do micro surveys, simple like ha asking a question in Slack and asking them to reply back with React G, mm -hmm. as simple as that. Yeah. Like, hey, we are thinking to move from this to that. Do you have any early feedback or concerns? Yep. Thumbs up, thumbs down, as simple as that. So those are all can be like, you can even do like project-based surveys. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, I think we have time for potentially one more, uh, maybe two. Let's see, how do you communicate the survey results with senior leadership to get buy-in for corrective actions or initiatives? So um, two things happens, one is, any feedback we get uh, as part of the survey, we share that with senior leadership on a quarterly basis. So uh, a summary of the report gets shared and we present to them saying like, this is what a front-end developer are facing right now. And this is the mm. investment we are making mm. and tentatively when it's gonna land mm. to set expectation. And if that's not aligned, if you need to speed up, then we gotta make changes in our priorities. So we do that like every quarterly, whenever the survey is done, we present to um, leadership team. We also do another thing which is around metrics. So um, I mentioned about like weekly metrics getting automatically posted mm -hmm. in the Slack channel. We also do like a summary of that on a monthly basis and report that to uh, mm -hmm. executive leadership. Mm -hmm. Say, this is what we are seeing in terms of trend. These are the areas where things are not going well and requires more investment versus areas which requires less investment. Got it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, I think we have time for just our one question, which we are doing to all, um, you know, everyone presenting. So, uh, yeah, if you were here yesterday, you know, the question is, uh, what is one book you would recommend to the audience that has changed the way you work or live your life? Just one book. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It doesn't have to be the book, but it could be a book. <laughs> okay. Uh, personally, for me, I would say um, Think Again by Adam Grant. It helped me to just, you know, the title says, like, <laughs> think about assumptions and stuff. It also helps with, you know, areas around how do we think about metrics? How do we think about, you know, developer productivity and what we should measure for, where to look for bias and things mm. like that. So, mm -hmm. yep. Awesome. Well, let's give it up one more time for Sridhar. Awesome job. Thanks, Thanks Sridhar. Thanks, Good stuff, man.